In this training video, we're going to look at using Microsoft PowerPoint for a assessment purpose or for quizzes. If, if people who were in training or wanted to do some kind of recapping activity from some kind of event and they wanted to use PowerPoint as part of that recapping activity. So in this example, we've got a grid board which has nine numbers, one to nine. And what the idea is here, every time someone presses a number, when it's in slideshow mode, that number should then disappear. They click on the button behind it, which takes to a question. So for example, question one would link to slide three, which asks a question on roles and responsibilities. When that question's answered, it then takes you to slide four to give the answer. And then you go back to return to quiz, back to slide two, and then the number one should disappear. So, so that's what we're, we're gonna create together. Now number three has already been set up. So I'll demonstrate then number one and number three when, when I've demonstrated number one in this activity. So what we're going to do here, we're going to use hyperlinks and triggers to enable us to control this assessment grid. So I'm going to click on the, the blue rectangle. Now this grid, just to show you how this grid is created, this grid was created through insert shapes rectangles and just creating a number of rectangles and for example the blue one is one rectangle the number is a second rectangle and then it is just typing in the second rectangle and it's been resized so i put a blue i put a white border around it so we can see there's two different objects so what i'm going to do with the number one i'm first going to click on the blue rectangle and then going to go to link and insert a link now we can choose what slide we want to link to. So in this example, I could choose existing slide or, in, or place in this document. So I'm going to go place in this document. And I'm going to leave it on slide three. So I'm going to choose slide three in this example. So I want it to go to the slide three as a hyperlink. Okay. And then what I want to happen is also the same for slide three to go to slide four as a hyperlink. So the answer, I need that to be linked. And the same process has, has happened here already. That's already been linked, placing this document to slide four, which is the answer. Okay. And then if we go back then to slide four, return to quiz and go back to the quiz, that's been hyperlinked already. And that goes back to slide two, which is the grid. So what should happen? When someone clicks on number one in this example, the number one should disappear. We click on the blue rectangle. That should take us to the question. Someone would have then answered the question. That then takes us to slide four. When slide four is then being checked, we return to quiz. And then back in the quiz, the number one should disappear. So we've set the hyperlink up. Now for the number itself, we need to do what's called an animation here. And because we want this number one to disappear, it's going to be an animation and we're going to do what's called a exit animation because we want it to in effect disappear we want it to exit and disappear as a number so when i click on disappear now it shows me it's set up as a disappear now we can control through the animation pane different triggers we can now control so for example the rectangle, which I'm going to click on number three, has already had a trigger set up for it. So these triggers are the way we control numbers to make sure that they disappear when we come back to the grid. Now, if I look at number one, and I click on right there, it hasn't got a trigger yet. So we're going to set a trigger for this rectangle, which happens to be called 12.1. Now to set the trigger for 12.1, I need to map it to the same trigger number. So when I come through the drop down arrow, go to effect options, and all your triggers are on time ins. There's a triggers button down the bottom. Click the arrows. I don't want it to be part of a sequence. I want to control the, figure my, the trigger myself by starting the effect on click of whatever object it happens to be. So I want it to, when I click, it's going to affect my trigger, which happens to be 12.1 I'm looking for. So there's 12.1. So all I'm doing is matching the trigger to the name of the 
rectangle itself in the number one case, this case. I'm now going to click OK. And we're now going to test it. So it should work for number one, where I click it on number one, then go to the rectangle, take a question in, go back to the quiz board from slide four, and then we'll try slide three, as, and then we'll try number three as well. So we're going to go into a slideshow from current slide. We're going to test it. So say now somebody said I want question one. So I'm going to click on number one, and number one disappears. Now the question is actually attached to the hyperlink on the blue rectangle. So I'm going to click on the blue rectangle behind number one. Here's the question. You'd give, if you had two groups, you'd ask both groups at this time to write their answers down without telling each other. So they've both got it written down. Whosoever group it is whose, uh, whose question this is, you then say, okay, we're going to just check the answer now, but you know that both answers are written down. We check the answer, and if the group who had the question had the correct answer, they get the points. If they didn't, then you can open up the points to the other group and give them a reduced point, but if they get it right, they get a point. Now we want to return to quiz. Now you see number one is gone, so we can't ask question one anymore. So let's try number three now. So number three. It's gone. Now click on the, in this case, the rectangle to go to a question. That's going to records. Going to check the answer. This one's on a, on, a, on a animation itself. So the little bullet points are coming one at a time. So we could check the answers like this. We can recap one at a time. And it's good for reinforcing methods. And go again and again. And now return to quiz. And now we can see two of the numbers are gone. So if we kept going and going and going, we'd complete the, the, the quiz board for all nine numbers. And it's a good way of having competitive assessment through PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you a completed example. I'm going to escape this. And I've got another example which has been completed. And we'll just look at how this works if I go through this quiz board, which has been set up for a couple of numbers. So I'm going to put it into the slideshow. So I'll go at number five this time. Get the button behind it. That takes me to a question. Find the answer. There's the answer. Return to quiz. Someone says that this time they want question number seven. Seven's gone. Question. Here's the question. Answer. This one's on an animation. There we go. Turn the quiz. And one more. We'll do we'll do a nine in this example. There's the question. Check the answer. We've got the ideas there of the of the answer. Return the quiz. And you keep going then until you can quit, complete the quiz board, or one of the teams win early. Depends on how they, and if they still win early, you could still then do a recap and make up some other kind of little competition to finish off the quiz board. So this gives you an idea how to use assessment within PowerPoint in quizzes using what's called animations and triggers, as well as using hyperlinks to hyperlink to other areas of a presentation. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you for the next tutorial and thanks for watching.